I don't know why I tweeted what I tweeted. It's not something that I was like, oh, I'm going to be this person on Twitter that says things he shouldn't. We may have lost a few potential customers, but fuck them. I'm Fahad Dirik. I am co-owner of Mangal 2, to go with my father. Been coming to the restaurant on and off since I was 11, really. It's a busy, typical Friday night. War, chaos, just trying to get all the orders out in time. Plus with the delivery orders coming at once as well, we're just trying to get everything cooking immediately, like almost like an assembly line. So this is when we're really on like survival mode. The key to a really good Turkish kebab, it would have to be good quality lamb. It would have to be fresh, prepared and butchered so that all the muscle, all the vein, all the excess fat is removed. Be left with what is the pinkest, the, the softest part of the meat. You know, cooking it over a charcoal that's quite a low fire, the distance between the meat and the charcoal, you want the minimum amount of charcoal as possible, but enough to cook it. Tonight, what time? 10 for yeah, just turn up. What's your name? Iki Salata Lazım Şuan. It's all like an, an alchemy. It's all you've got to really get the right balance and the right feel for it. You have to make sure that you don't do a Jamie Oliver, bish bash bosh, Bob's your uncle, smash cook. You know, that approach is not for kebabs. You've really got to feel the charcoal, feel the heat, manage it and uh, take care of the meat. Tonight's the first time I've been to Mangal 2. Um, I've heard about the Twitter account before, but um, yeah, this is the first time I'm, I've been coming here. There will be people coming in solely based on the Twitter account. The most recent tweet a day ago was, remember that time that Britain voted Brexit? Lol, what the fuck was that about? Question mark. The Twitter account came about six years ago. We had like 100 or 200 odd followers. Twitter's just been an outlet for me to express my views, but try to make it relevant to kebabs. I'm glad it's happened the way it has. This is an Ocakbaşı grill. It's a traditional Turkish way to make kebabs. This is the heart and soul. This is the last stop for the meat. From being prepared, to being marinated, to being kept in the fridge, to being ordered. The final portal call is here. My dad's previous restaurant had this as well. He was the first to bring it into the UK. He's a pioneer when it comes to kebabs, particularly in Britain. When he's coming in, it's like a school inspector almost. This is lamb shish kebab. We're going to marinate it. We use tomato and red pepper puree. Yogurt. Yogurt is made tasty and soft. Some salt and some black pepper. Two or three spoon vegetable oils. Then we're gonna mix it. Here's the fun part. It's his recipe, one he's been using for 30 years. More than 30 years. Mango 2 is a restaurant that my father opened in 1997 um, based on the success of Mango 1, which was around the corner. That had only three tables and he wanted a larger restaurant with a more variety of dishes to showcase his talents as a chef. So he opened Mangal 2, which was a great success. However, he was a chef as well as a business owner, so he couldn't really split his time between the two restaurants. Eventually, he sold Mangal 1 back to his original business partner. We've kept Mangal 2 ever since. This is Sartor Usta. He's one of our longer members, longer term members of staff. Buradan gelmeden önce ne iyi pişirirdin? Sen pek bir şey bilmiyordun değil mi? Yok, yok. No, he didn't know anything. He learned everything from scratch. Yeah. The restaurant for me was mainly a place where I could spend time with my father because of the anti-social hours in the restaurant. But it was more like a bonding process between my father and I. He worked seven days a week, prepping, grilling, running the restaurant. It was very hands-on. I mean, it's only when you're a bit older that you realise, wow, he actually built this from scratch, which seems very impossible and difficult for someone from my generation to achieve. There you go, sir. Enjoy. And the chicken. I'll bring you a glass, glass of white wine. Thank you, sir. Gilbert and George, they've been our biggest asset to this restaurant. 
We've been coming to the Manga for probably 20 years or more. They followed my dad from the first restaurant he worked in Newington Green to Manga 1 to Manga 2. I've known them my whole life. I view them like my two uncles and those family members. They're so kind and nice. It's very exciting for us because it really is like family. We, we attended it first and his brother's circumcision party. That's when we became family, yes. <laughs> It's just incredible that they stumbled upon my dad 30 years ago almost and, um, and they're still here today. As a kid, I was mainly focused on the kitchen, so I'd go downstairs and whenever there was an order of like pan-fried liver, pan-fried chicken or kidneys, I'd actually be the one cooking it as an 11-year-old, which always I found funny because the customer wouldn't know that and maybe I shouldn't say that on camera but I'd be like adding the spices and the flour and frying it and I found that exciting and I was really proud of the fact that oh my god they're, they're paying money to eat what I've cooked sort of thing. I liked working you know and um, my dad would give me like £10 a day or £20 a day. I'd just save my money and just buy like Master System games, N64 games and stuff. I thought I was really um, cool for doing that at the time but yeah. Being Turkish back then for me was a bit of a burden in that you don't fit in and you're kind of ashamed of who you are. You're ashamed that your name is Farhat rather than Jack or John or Mike or you're kind of made to feel ashamed that your mum doesn't speak good English, your dad doesn't speak good English and you really, you know, you really feel that growing up. That's been a constant sort of internal battle for me. But then, as I became older, that became my strength, being Turkish and having like a lot of you know, family here and a community here that I could rely upon. Having a business here became my main uh, strength in life. My son, Zeki, this is Saul's granddad of the grill. I'm trying to go near him. Looking at my dad, I knew that because he was so hands-on, it's no coincidence that he works seven days a week, prepping, grilling. And even when he's at home and he's got time off, he just likes getting everyone together. Just yeah, to so we'll, we'll have a family yeah. barbecue and he'll just cook and cook and cook. But he won't actually eat at yeah, the end of yeah. it. Yeah. He gets more pleasure from watching people. Yeah, don't think he likes eating the cold meat the next yeah, day. Exactly. What's Dada doing? What's Dada doing? <laughs> If as a family we argue, it's about the restaurant. If as a family we come together, it's through the restaurant. It's like the spine that holds it together and it's all we've known as a family. Um, and I just want to keep that going. My <coughs> father brought so much into this industry. I can comfortably say that he is the king of kebabs. I'm not saying that. <laughs> I mean, if there was such a royal title, he's the king of it, I'm just Charles, waiting for the throne. Nah, no, he's, he's very king good. King is my son. 